Good morning, everybody. If uh, for our kids, you are going to the Sunday school. Go with uh, Tita Ruby there. Thank you, praise and worship team. Thank you to Conrad for the announcement. Uh, study shows that uh, guest decides in five minutes whether they like the church or not. So before I come, they already decided <laughs> whether they like this church or not. Uh, so we are going through a sermon series uh, we call Spiritual Disciplines. These are disciplines that uh, we need to do as Christ followers. We have talked about worship both corporate and personal, talk about scripture, reading of the scripture, we talk about prayer and uh, witnessing, and today we're going to talk about forgiving. So if you have your Bible, the uh, text will be in, uh, this is our core text, I'm going to mention other texts as well, but Matthew 18, 15 to 20, and uh, I'm going to read this for us, Matthew 18, 15 to 20. Um, as soon as you find your text, please uh, stand with me and uh, join me as I read the Word of God. Uh, just in reverence for the Word, please uh, stand with me. A brother who sins against you. If your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault. Just between the two of you. If he listens to you, you have won your brother over. But if he will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, Treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. This is the word of God. Let me pray. Father, thank you for your word. Pray that it will change our circumstances, our relationships, and ultimately our eternal destiny. We ask Holy Spirit to work and to speak in our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please be seated. So our main text today talks about sin in the church context, so meaning within the believers, within Christians, in this church, for example, or in other churches. We know that uh, Jesus, in this text, is talking about forgiveness because he explains after this down below verse 21, he explains about the parable of the unmerciful servant or the unforgiving servant, in other uh, titles says. So Matthew, in fact, Matthew 18 ends this way. This is in verse 35. This is how my heavenly Father will treat you, each of you, unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So I'm establishing simply that this text talks about forgiving and the consequences of un unforgiving heart. So let me, uh, I have three things uh, we need to answer today. Number one is, what is forgiveness or forgiving? Second is, why should I forgive you? And thirdly is, how do I do that? How should I forgive? So, Let's start with the what, but I'm going to do it in a way that is a quiz. So the, the what is forgiveness, or it could be what forgiveness is not, based on these questions. So I have five questions. 
you have to get at least three to pass. 60%. <laughs> All right, that's good. Okay, so uh, here we go. Are you ready? No, no copying, okay, your neighbor. <laughs> no passing a note or anything. Number one. Okay, number one question. So basically, the answer is true or false. There is no trolls. You have to pick true or false. No Shannon false either. Just true or false. Okay, number one. Forgiveness can only be offered once a person asks for it. True or false? False? Okay, so anyone else uh, has a true? Write it down. Take a note, a mental note, and then add it at the end. Be honest with your addition. <laughs> okay? The answer really is, uh, yeah, this is uh, false. Obviously, you need to forgive. How can you forgive those who are dead? They can't ask you for forgiveness. So this is false because you can't forgive people uh, because it's coming from you. Here's the second question. Forgiveness includes restoring a relationship. Forgiveness includes restoring a relationship. True or false? Trolls. <laughs> Here is the answer. It takes one person to forgive and two to reconcile. God's heart, of course, you hear about Psalm 133, right? That uh, it's good when people, uh, brothers and sisters, live in unity. But uh, it, it's not always possible. It takes two people. So the answer to this is false. Okay, so uh, check yourself. Are you two out of two, one out of two, or zero out of two? Mental note, okay? Take a note. Here's the third one. Forgiveness is pardoning the offense. Is pardoning the offense. True or false? Okay, decide in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> the answer, yes, it is false. Because only God, only God, okay, pardons. Or it says can, only God can bring vengeance. Only God is the judge. You find this in Romans 12. I'll mention that uh, text later too. So, um, yeah, forgiveness is pardoning the offense that is false. Again, it all points inside of you right there, right? Okay, so here's the fourth one. Forgiveness is to be continuously offered. In other words, it's not a one-time act. It is a continuous act. True or false? The answer is <laughs> it's true. You know, it doesn't matter how many times a person hurts or offends you. Uh, you need to forgive. I'm, I'm reading from, listen to this. Okay, this is in Luke 17. The answer to this. Uh, 3 to 4. Listen to this. Uh, Luke 17, 3 to 4. It says, So watch yourselves. If, you're, if your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, forgive him. <laughs> okay, so it is a continuous act. Here's the last one. Your chance to get 60%. <laughs> the passing grade. Forgiveness includes forgetting the offense. True or false? Forgiveness includes forgetting the offense. True or false? Shannon, false or true? <laughs> the answer is, yes, false. You know, scientists... Uh, I, I read a research about this brain, uh, brain research that our brain is like filing cabinets. Like it's all in there. So the, the uh, traumatic event or the most important events are things that you really don't forget, but it's all filed in there. 
And so, in other words, unless you have a brain damage, you will not, for, you know, forget things. I suggest that instead of forgetting that we remember how much God forgave us, that would be the better route, and that way we can also bring uh, forgiveness to others. So, someone says that forgetting is like meeting someone for the first time. So, if you and your wife, and your, your husband and wife had an argument, and your wife asks for forgiveness, and you say, Huh? Who are you? That means you're forgiving that person, right? <laughs> it's like meeting someone for the first time. That means no history, no baggage, no grudges, no hidden resentments. So that's what forgiveness is and uh, also what forgiveness is not. So how did you do? 100%? Anybody? Oh, somebody got 100%. Oh, four. 80%. That's 80. That's B. So from A to B, who got 60? That's... Uh, what is that called? Is that D? That's a D, right? Yeah, that's a D. Because 70 is a C. <laughs> Anybody got 60, 60%? 6 out of 10. How about 4 out of 10? Anybody? Or 2 out of 10? No, 2 out of 5. 1 out of 5. 0. <laughs> Who's not willing to tell me the truth? <laughs> What forgiveness is and what is. So the next question is, why should I forgive? Why? Number one is because God's forgiveness depends on it. His, his forgiveness is dependent on our forgiveness. Listen to this verse. It says, for if you forgive other people, but they sin, when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And then here is this uh, but, transitional word. But, if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So God's forgiveness is really dependent on how we forgive others. And in fact, Forgiveness is ingrained in our Christian faith because without forgiveness, we will still remain unforgiven and no eternity. And so forgiveness is very important for us. And uh, by the way, when you forgive, it means you dismiss or you release. So when someone owes you money and you release that person from obligation or debt, that means the debt has been canceled. And so that's what the actual meaning of forgiveness. So because God's forgiveness depends on it, we also need to forgive others. Here's the second reason why. Because God expects you to do it. God expects us to forgive other people. Uh, listen to this, and I underline again this uh, uh, verse 32, but listen to the whole text. It says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. Why should I forgive you? Because it says, just as in Christ. There is this expectation that just as in Christ forgave you, so you must forgive other people. Just as in Christ God forgave you, or forgive me, we need to forgive others also. That is expected for us as Christians, as believers. Here's the third reason. Because God says that the alternative to an unforgiving heart is bitterness. Actually, that is only the beginning. Because if you look at this text again, you notice how it's talking about at the end about forgiving others just as Christ forgiven you. And it begins actually with bitterness. But bitterness is just the beginning of that uh, staircase. I'll, let me show you something that... Uh, 
that I did using a PowerPoint. Sorry, it's, I'm not very artistic. In Tagalog, hindi ako maarte. That's how far I can, I can get to this. Uh, but you notice that bitterness is just the beginning of the staircase. It's called, I call it the staircase of the unforgiving. Bitterness ends with rage. That's when you're starting to heat up and then you become angry. You're red. Anybody saw that uh, red movie, or whatever that show is, the red panda, or is it called Red Panda? Red. That's like, it's, it's the same bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, but it ends with malice. Malice is by definition, uh, you do something wicked, something evil. So it really begins inside, it results in evil or wicked action. So that is the uh, staircase of the unforgiving according to Ephesians 4.31. But there's another alternative in verse 32. I call it the alternative stair staircase. And it begins with kindness, compassion, and forgiveness. That is a better alternative to the unforgiving staircase. And uh, I quote uh, Smeads uh, when he says, and I quote, When I genuinely forgive, I set a prisoner free and, that, and then discover that the prisoner I set free was me. Very interesting. So God, uh, God, we need to forgive because God's forgiveness is dependent on it. God expects and the alternative is really bitterness, which ends in malice. So let's talk about how should I forgive? How do I forgive? Um, I call it ABC. The ABC, it's simple, but it's not easy. Actually, it's not easy to forgive. Number one, acknowledge that you have been hurt. So now we go to our text. Uh, core text, in verse 15, it says, If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault. Just between the two of you, if they listen to you, you have won them over. You know, the starting point of forgiveness or forgiving others is admitting, first of all, acknowledging that you have been hurt. Because we can pretend sometimes that it didn't hurt. You know, there's a saying in our English language that says, sticks and stones may break my bone, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie. That is not true. And so first, it's admitting or acknowledging, you know, you know I've been hurt by what you said. I have, I've been hurt by what you've done. And then the second portion of the ABC, so A stands for acknowledge that you've been hurt. Uh, the B is break the chain of the need to get even or revenge, the need for revenge. You need to break that chain. It is a chain. Uh, Romans 12, 19 to 20 says, do not take revenge, my dear friends. But leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It's mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. You need to break the chain you know, because it's a natural reaction when someone hurt you, when someone said something to hurt you or done something, it is a natural reaction to think about how you can get even. It is. And so you need to break that, that chain. It is a chain in our lives. So there are three barriers to an unforgiving heart. Number one, as uh, mentioned here, is revenge. I'm going to get even. That's revenge. The second barrier is resentment. I am going to stay angry. And third is remembering. I'll always remember what you've done. 
It is the opposite of, there is a, uh, the Filipino culture called utang na loob, right? This is quite the opposite of that. It's like the negative part of it. When uh, someone has done something to you, you say to yourself, I will never forget. I will always remember what you have done. So at least we need to break the chain. Uh, I'm quoting Philip Yancey in his book, What's So Amazing About Grace? Uh, he says, at last I understood. In the final analysis, forgiveness is an act of faith. By forgiving another, I am trusting that God is a better justice maker than I am. By forgiving, I release my own right to get even and leave all issues of fairness to God who work out to work out. I leave in God's hands the scales that must balance justice and mercy. Page 93, if you, if you want to find where that is. You, we may have been wounded, actually, by other people, both inside and outside. But you know what? Uh, every wound heals. It does. The reason why people hurt or disappoint us is because people, and I'm not giving them excuses, people are imperfect, just like you and I. That's why people say something or do something that hurts. But we need to break the chain of the need to get even. Here's the third one. This is a choice for us. And we need to choose forgiveness. Because it is a choice. From our core text again, uh, 18, 15 to 17. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault. It doesn't say, if your brother or sister sins, Avoid them when you see them in Walmart or in an aisle of superstore. Avoid them. That's not what it says. It says, go and point out their fault. Notice that the initiator is someone who has been hurt. Because you know why? Because sometimes the other person may not even know that you have hurt or said something hurtful. So then that's why the person who initiates is the person who has been hurt. Go and point out their fault. Just between the two of you, if they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. In the Bible, three witnesses is always required. And uh, that's why it's very important for us to have witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. If they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector, an unbeliever, in other words. So steps here that we see is that First of all, keep it private, will you? If someone has done something against you, don't post it on your Facebook page. <laughs> don't say to the world, you know, someone has said something to me. No, 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 keep it private. You have been hurt, acknowledge it. Break the chain to get even. Choose to forgive by doing the steps. Keep it private. And then you go. It is up to you to go to this person. The second, according to this in verse 16, if that doesn't help or that doesn't work, get somebody else, like an elder of the church or someone you trust in the church, one of the pastors in the church. Find somebody and say, can you help me? We need to let this person know that he's done something, and I just want to get this resolved. That's the second step. 
If the first two steps doesn't work, share it to the church. I have an announcement to make today. Our brother and sister, they don't want to make up. <laughs> Is that what you like to do? I think nobody wants to do that, right? Actually, we've never done that actually in this church, but it is a possibility, it's an option. If that person refuses to listen to the church, treat him as an unbeliever. So, in other words, start evangelizing. Have you come to the place in your spiritual life where you know for certain if you were to die today, you would go to heaven? That person is an unbeliever. Unbelievable. He's been attending the church for a long time. Still an unbeliever. That's what, that's what it says. So forgiving is not an option, but it is a command. In fact, Matthew 5, 24 talks about offering, right? Giving your offering to the Lord. Jesus is teaching, if your brother has something against you, go and be, be reconciled to your brother. Then make an offering. So question Is there someone you need to go this week? Quote, unquote, you go and tell them their fault. Don't think it's okay that you've been hurt. Don't think that I can get over this. You know, the, there's a Filipino culture that sometimes it's a, I'm just revealing cultural uh, situations here that you may reflect whether it's uh, applicable or maybe something you need to, uh, to change in some, at some point. Um, let me tell you a story. So I was, uh, I was in the Philippines. As many of you have been in the Philippines. And I was in a restaurant in a hotel. Wow, Eddie, wow. <laughs> And as I was eating, the guy who was an American says to the Filipina waitress, and he says this, you know what, I, last night I was drunk. I apologize for being rude to you. Uh, I'm sure you remember, you know, you, you remember, and I really ask for your forgiveness. And the Filipina waitress said, that's okay. And the American said, no, 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 it's not okay. Will you forgive me? And the lady said, the Filipino lady said, okay. No, no, can you say, I forgive you? <laughs> that's, what, <laughs> that's what the American was trying to, just to say, you know, I, he was waiting for, you know, I forgive you. And you know, that's, sometimes we need to say that to make us, uh, feel and know that I'm forgiven. That's what we need to do. So, yeah, it's not okay. <laughs> yeah. What she meant by that is, that's okay, let's forget about that, but that's not uh, acceptable to the American. That's not okay. So here's some uh, reflection for us to take home today, application. The blessings of forgiving others, and I'll take that again from our core text today which is uh, the last two verses of Matthew 18 in our text. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am, there am I with them. So I want to point out to you why verses 19 and 20 is actually there to finish this text. Because it actually reminds us of the blessings of forgiving others. Verse 19, for example, reminds us the blessing of answered prayer. So when you forgive others and you pray, your prayers will be answered. That's, this is what it says. Truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything, they ask for, it will be done for you. It's talking about prayer. And the last one is the blessing of the presence of Jesus. 
Verse 20, for where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. You know, it is in the context. So we, sometimes we use this verse when we pray. You know, there are two of us prayers, right? Praying together, three of us, and we know that God is there. But if you study the context, it's actually in the context of forgiveness, of forgiving others. And so when we forgive, it assures us of the presence of Jesus. So as I close, just think about that. Prayers are answered. Presence of Christ is there. I want to end by saying that forgiveness is not easy. I have to acknowledge that. It is difficult. You know who the most knowledgeable of what it means to be uh, to have a hard time in forgiving, you know who, who it is? Like, who better knows than God? Because he, he knows how costly forgiveness is because he gave his one and only son for our own forgiveness. He sacrificed his own son, Jesus Christ. So forgiveness is not easy, it's costly, but for Christ's followers, it is the only path forward. There is no other. And so the process and practice for us of forgiving others begin by receiving forgiveness from God. If you have not received forgiveness from God, I can say this, that it's also very hard for you to forgive others. But if you have received forgiveness from God, you have no reason, I have no reason, not to forgive others. In other words, we have... No way out. The path forward for Christ's followers is to forgive others. This is the word of God. Let me pray. Let me call the praise team. Please. So as I end this message, I don't want to let it pass as we bow our heads and close, close our eyes. I don't want to let anything pass that if there's something in your heart, in your mind, or someone in your mind and in your heart, forgiveness begins within you. It is your choice. It is not someone asking for forgiveness. It is your choice. So acknowledge that you've been hurt you can do this while you are sitting. You don't have to call somebody. You don't need to post anything on your social media. You can do this right now by acknowledging you've been hurt. Break the chain of revenge. Choose today to forgive. Pray this prayer, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your forgiveness, for forgiving me of all of my sins. That is the first point of me uh, uh, being able to forgive others. I ask that you forgive me and that today I make a decision to forgive. You name that person, whoever they are, to forgive him, her, this person. That is my choice today. That is my decision. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray.